Thunder only happens when it's raining. Players only love you when they're playing. Stevie Nicks. The 1975 present-day Fleetwood Mac story is one of historic success, but also one of great heartache, jealousy, and emotional turmoil. Many modern bands and artists have drawn inspiration from Fleetwood Mac. I'm a longtime fan of Fleetwood Mac and have a great deal of research into the band. Today I will walk you through the history of Fleetwood Mac, beginning with the introduction of Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks to the band. I will then walk you through the recording of Rumors, and I will end off talking about the albums that followed Rumors and where the band stands today. First, let's talk about Fleetwood Mac's rebranding and the addition of new members. Perhaps the best decision and one of the most defining for the band was the addition of Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks, and alongside that, the recording of Fleetwood Mac, also referred to as the White Album. Nick DiRizzo's Ultimate Classic Rock article published in December uh, 2014 taught me that in 1974, the band Fleetwood Mac was in freefall. The band had always been marked by changing lineups, members would leave for various reasons, and new ones would take their place. In 1974, they lost another, Bob Welch. Fleetwood Mac was in freefall. Mick Fleetwood was in Los Angeles when he heard the track Frozen Love off an album titled Buckingham Nicks, and suddenly he had an idea. More on that later. Lindsay Buckingham and Stevie Nicks were in a very similar predicament as Fleetwood Mac, unsure of where their careers would go. Buckingham and Nicks met in high school in San Francisco. Buckingham and Nicks moved to Los Angeles and were able to get a record deal as a duo. They soon recorded the album Buckingham Nicks, but they did not fare well. The duo was unsure about what was next for their futures. McFleetwood, after hearing them sing, was able to track down Lindsay Buckingham and asked him to join Fleetwood Mac. Buckingham drew a line and said he would only join if Stevie Nicks was invited as well. Fleetwood agreed and history was made. Jeff Giles' Ultimate Classic Rock article published in July 2015 taught me that the new lineup had enormous success and rebranded itself in the new album Fleetwood Mac. The new Fleetwood Mac all got together and instantly clicked. What followed was a series of rehearsals in the studio. The White Album recorded was recorded in 1975 at Sound City Studios in Los Angeles. They brought in Keith Olsen to produce. The album was a mix of songs by Buckingham, Nix, and Christine McVie. The band was not immediately a success uh, when it hit shelves in July, 20, in July 1975. So the band went on a rigorous tour schedule to establish the credibility of the new band and to sell their new record. It paid off when in September of 1976, the album chopped the charts, having sold 5 million copies while having made a major achievement. In finding the band was brewing, it was soon to explore, to explode. Now let's talk about Fleetwood Mac's biggest success, its multi-platinum album, Rumors. After watching David Heffernan's 2006 documentary, Classic Album Rumors, I learned about the creation and the meaning behind one of the best-selling albums of all time, Rumors. The band had all suffered personal dilemmas following the White Album. Christine and John McVie had gotten a divorce. McFleetwood had also gotten a divorce after his wife cheated on him with a former band member. And Stevie Nicks and Lindsay Buckingham had also gotten a divorce. When they got together to write their songs, John McVie noticed that all the songs were personal diaries about each other and the pain that they were feeling. He decided that they should call the album Rumors. Lindsay Buckingham wrote Go Your Own Way to show his frustration with Stevie Nicks. And he also wrote Never Going Back Again to say that after getting in a new relationship, he would not be going back to Stevie Nicks. Stevie Nicks wrote Dreams to express her frustrations with Lindsay Buckingham and the way that their relationship had ended. Another notable song is Silver Springs, considering our location to it. Silver Springs was written when Stevie Nicks was on the tour bus and she saw the sign Silver Springs. She thought the name sounded like a perfect place. And so the inspiration of the song is that Lindsay Buckingham could have been her perfect place, but he ruined it. Another very notable song on the album is The Chain. The Chain was a song that was written by all the members in the band, each contributing their own pieces to the song. It's also notable because it marks the idea behind the band that even through personal dilemmas, they realize that they're stronger together and that they would not break the chain. Uh, Rumors would go on to become the 10th best-selling album of all time. It has sold over 40 million copies. At the 1978 Grammy Awards, it won Album of the Year. And most recently, in 2020, Dreams entered the top 10 on the Billboard charts for the first time since this left over 40 years ago. Next, we will discuss the albums that followed Rumors up to the state of the band today. The decades that followed Rumors were ever-changing for the band. They would go on to sell three more albums together, 
Tusk, Mirage, and Tango in the Night. But after Tango in the Night, it was the last album to feature all the same members. The band began to experience the comings and goings of many new members in the years that followed. Jeffrey Resner wrote in 1978, Rolling, 1987 Rolling Stones article that followed the success of Tango in the Night. Lindsay Buckingham had decided to leave the band to write on solo projects. Fleetwood Mac then brought in Billy Burnett and Rick Vito to play guitar. They would then embark on a 10-week tour to promote Tango in the Night. After the tour, they would record the album Behind the Mask. Andy Green, in a 2018 Rolling Stones article, noted that Stevie Nicks left the band following the Behind the Masks tour in 1990, deciding to focus on her solo career and take time to herself to recover from her cocaine addiction. In a brief moment in 1993, the five members reunited to perform Don't Stop, a song off rumors for President Bill Clinton's inauguration. In 1995, Fleetwood Mac released one of its biggest commercial failures, the album Time. Fleetwood Mac brought in Dave Messon and Becca Bramlett. Rick Vito left the band. But the most notable thing about Time is for the first time since the White Album, it was the first album not to contain at least one song by Nicks or Buckingham. In 1997, Lindsay Buckingham and Stevie Nicks came back into the band for a reunion concert called the dance. Nixon Buckingham would continue to stay in the band, but Christine McVie left after citing a need for personal time. The group would go on to record uh, their last album, Say You Will, recorded in 2003. According to a November 2014 Sky News article, Christine McVie joined the band in a guest appearance at the O2 Arena in London in 2013. After the concert, having discussed it with the band, she decided to rejoin again and to start a new tour meaning for the first time since 1997, the five members were all together in the band again. Following a 2018 Music Cares event, Lindsay Buckingham was fired from the band. The story of what led to Buckingham's termination from the band is unclear to the public and is an ongoing story. Stephanie Roderick, in a September 2020 Rolling Stones article, wrote that Buckingham claims he was fired because Nix wanted to shape the band in her image and the other members wanted to cover up for her. Nix claimed that at the Music Cares event, Buckingham performed in an inappropriate manner, smirking and laughing during her speech. Having decided she would no longer work with Buckingham, she informed the band she would leave, and after many talks, the band decided to fire Buckingham and bring in Neil Flynn and Mike Campbell. What's important to remember is Fleetwood Mac, in its evolutionary years, introduced two fairly new artists to the scene, Lindsay Buckingham and Stevie Nicks. They opened with a huge success on the White Album, and then would go on to create one of the best-selling albums of all time, Rumors. Next, they would go on to make three more albums before breaking into different groups with members coming and going. Until finally, in 2014, that core five would be back together through, though short-lived, with the firing of Buckingham just four years later. The band en encountered huge success, but was always marked with jealousy and heartache. But all this created great music. If you don't love me now, you will never love me again. I can still hear you saying you would never break the chain. Fleetwood Mac.